Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Kuroneko, also known as The Black Cat, a Japanese horror film from 1968 that is based on an ancient folk tale. This is set in the 12th century. Yone and her daughter-in-law Shige live in a house in a bamboo grove. A group of rabid samurai soldiers pass by one day, invade their home, and eat their food. And it gets even worse than that. These soldiers rape and murder the women, and then burn their house down with them inside. But then, an otherworldly event occurs. A black cat appears, licks at their, at their dead bodies, and the women return as ghosts with the appearance of fine ladies. And they seek out samurai, not just the samurai that uh, murdered them, but any samurai, really. And they seduce them, they bring them to an illusory mansion in the bamboo grove. And then they kill the samurai in a similar way that a cat would kill its prey, by tearing at their throats with their teeth. After a while, you know, word of this gets out, and a man is hired by the government to eliminate the ghostly threat. But his prior connection to these women complicates matters. Now this movie wastes no time. Okay, the opening scene is sufficiently disturbing, and these ghostly women are on a path of vengeance within the first 10 minutes of the film. This provides a chance for the filmmakers to infuse a lot of horror content, and they certainly take advantage of that opportunity. You know, these ghosts are vicious, which is understandable uh, when one considers how they originally died when they were human. And when they attack, they go for the jugular, the neck, and that results in some bloody deaths. But there's also a lighter, old-school spookiness to the proceedings. For example, you know, the facial makeup of the ghosts are cat-like at times, and their mannerisms are also pretty interesting and, uh, I guess, uh, I guess you would say spooky is a, is a proper term. Like, for example, the back of their hair will slightly move like a cat's tail at times, you know, when they're talking to people, which I found to be kind of, kind of cute, but also kind of eerie as well. Now, most of the vengeful deaths occur during the opening half of the film. You know, this film gets kicked off on a pretty uh, uh, horrific start, and it maintains that for a little while. But, <coughs> excuse me, the latter half is more dedicated to the aftermath of their vengeance and the man's pursuit, the man who's brought in to, to take them out, and what his relationship is with these ghostly women. The second half is a little bit more dramatic and romantic, uh, with some horror peppered in. The character interaction definitely helps to give the film some depth and emotional resonance. I really like the ending to this as well. This is a good ending. In terms of style, it's the lighting in Kurt Oneko that leaves the biggest impression on me every time I watch it. You know, some of my personal favorite horror films are excessive in their use of color. You know, like Dario Argento, or more recently, Panos Cosmatos. I'm a fan of excessiveness in horror films. And although Kurt Oneko was shot in black and white, its use of contrast between black and white is excessive. You know, it's almost as if objects are glowing in the dark, because some of the scenes are shot in a pitch black location with brightly lit objects. The set designs in this are fantastic. They're really good. There's also a lot of fog that is used, which is very atmospheric as well. Visually and uh, <clears throat> in terms of sound design, this movie is just top-notch stuff. This film was directed by Kaneto Shindo, a man who is most well-known for his film Onibaba, but he has also contributed some other very good movies like Human and Edo Porn. Uh, but I would have to say that my personal favorite title from this man would probably be Kuroneko. It probably is. This is a very impressive Japanese classic horror film. It is a must-watch. It is widely available in the United States. So definitely check this one out in your, uh, your horror excursions and discoveries this October, if you haven't already. And as always, I'll see you next time.